Pursuant to applicable law and my determination that attendance by remote means is necessary because an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent uh, due to the declared public health disaster caused by COVID-19, this meeting is conducted by video conference. Uh, we will now have a roll call vote to establish quorum. Uh, will the aldermen please make sure that their microphones are unmuted only when your name is called. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Laspada. Here. Alderman Laspada is here. Alderman Hopkins. Here. Alderman Hopkins is here. Alderman Dow. Here. Alderman Dow is here. Alderman King. Present. Alderman King is present. Alderman Harrison. Present. Alderman Harrison is present. Alderman Sawyer. Here. Alderman Sawyer is present. Alderman Mitchell. Here. Alderman Mitchell is present. Alderman Harris. Here. Alderman Harris is present. Alderman Beal. Yep. Alderman Beal is present. Alderman Zlowski Garza. Here. Here and happy birthday. Alderman Thompson. Present. Alderman Thompson is present. Alderman Cardenas. Present. Alderman Cardenas is present. Alderman Quinn. Here. Alderman Quinn is present. Alderman Burke. Here. Alderman Here. Burke. Here. Alderman Burke is present. Alderman Lopez. Madam President, your Christmas present is here. Alderman Lopez is present. Alderman Coleman. Present. Alderman Coleman is present. Alderman Moore. Present. Alderman Moore is present. Alderman Curtis. Here. Alderman Curtis is present. Alderman O'Shea. Here. Alderman O'Shea is present. Alderman Taylor. Here. Alderman Taylor is present. Alderman Brookins. Here. Alderman Brookins is present. Alderman Rodriguez. Present. Alderman Rodriguez is present. Alderman Tavares. Present. Alderman Tavares is present. Alderman Scott. Present. Alderman Scott is present. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Present. Alderman Cicho Lopez is present. Alderman Maldonado. Alderman Burnett. Present. Alderman Burnett is present. Alderman Irvin. Present. Alderman Irvin is present. Alderman Talaferro. Present. Alderman Talaferro is present. Alderman Ravoyas. Present, Madam Clerk. Alderman Ravoyas is present. Alderman Cardona. Present. Alderman Cardona is present. Alderman Wagaspack. Here. Alderman Wagaspack is present. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Presente. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez is present. Alderman Austin. Here. Alderman Austin is present. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Present. Alderman Ramirez Rosa is present. Alderman Vegas. Present. Alderman Vegas is present. Alderman Mitz. Present. Alderman Mitz is present. Alderman Spasado. Nick Spasado is here. Alderman Spasado is present. Alderman Nugent. Present. Alderman Nugent is present. Alderman Vasquez. Present. Alderman Vasquez. Present. Alderman Vasquez is present. Alderman Napolitano. Present. Alderman Napolitano is present. Alderman Riley. Present. Alderman Riley is present. Alderman Smith. Present. Alderman Smith is present. Alderman Tunney. Present. Alderman Tunney is present. Alderman Gardner. Present. Alderman Gardner is present. Okay. Alderman Kappelman. Present. Alderman Kappelman is present. Alderman Martin. Present. Alderman Martin is present. Alderman Osterman. Present. Alderman Osterman is present. Alderman Haddon. Present. Alderman Haddon is present. Alderman Silverstein. Yeah. Present. Alderman Silverstein is present. Peter? Your Honor, there are 49 members present. I don't know. Your Honor, we have a quorum present. I don't, I don't. I... Alderman Austin, I few. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. There are 49 members present. We have a quorum. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now rise to um, say the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing. I pledge of allegiance, allegiance. to the flag of the United, United States, 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 States of America and to the republic which stands, stand. one nation, one nation under God, under God who is indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice for all. for all. God bless America. Thank you, Nick. <clears throat> It's my pleasure to announce that the invocation will be delivered by the great Reverend 
uh, Marshall Hatch Sr. of New Mount Pilgrim Church uh, from the West Side. Reverend Hatch, um, I just wanna personally thank you uh, for your leadership um, during this very difficult time, the work that you were doing on the West Side, particularly your investment in the young men on the West Side um, is a remarkable gift uh, to our city. And we send you um, and your congregation um, the warmest of blessings and offer you, um, you a happy you. holiday uh, greeting uh, from me on behalf of, of the city. Thank you so much for all that you do. The floor is yours, Reverend Hatch. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And <clears throat> thank you to the members of the city council, our fellow citizens to let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the strength, the gift of life this day to serve. And we pray that you would bless the deliberations of this council today. We thank you for the leadership of the mayor. And we pray that you continue to grace all of these public servants with the hearts of shepherds that they will have with us and for us the vision of one city of one great city by the lake, the Lake Michigan, a city of great industry, a city of great hospitality, a city of big shoulders, railroads and air travel, a city of Carl Sandburg, but also let it be a city that welcomes the Laquan McDonald's and the Betty Joneses and the Quintonio Legrears. Help us to see that the vision of one city means that we put the needs of our children, the elderly and the poor first. We remember the teaching of scripture that when the least of these, those who are in the margins, when their interests become central that's when the kingdom of God arrives. And so we thank you now for the power to shape the direction of this city, to make a difference on behalf of those who are struggling in the midst of this coronavirus, this pandemic, and the ongoing epidemic of the pathologies of poverty. And now, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be vessels to be used by you. And we pray that you would use this city council to do your work. And we ask every blessing in the name of the one who is born outside the inn in this season, baptized in muddy Jordan, reared in the ghettos of Nazareth, arrested by the authorities, crucified by the empire, but raised by the power of God. And we pray this prayer, the name of him who says, as you've done unto the least of these, you've done it unto me, even in Jesus name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Pastor Hatch. And before we uh, begin the public comment, I do want to remind our colleagues um, that today is the birthday of Alderwoman Sadulowski Garza, and wish her a very happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Sue. Way ahead of you, Mayor. Happy birthday, Sue. Happy birthday, Madam President. Happy birthday, Sue. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And I also want to extend uh, a happy birthday to all the December uh, babies, because I think we've had some that have occurred already, and some will be occurring um, after uh, we have our city council meeting today. So happy birthday uh, to all. And at this moment, we will begin the public comment. The council will now begin the public comment period, which is limited to a maximum of 30 minutes. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. Any written comments that have been submitted will be posted and made available for automatic review. The first speaker is Kate Lowe. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kate Lowe. I'm a member of the Bridgeport Alliance in the 11th Ward. The Bridgeport Alliance is today asking council to take two actions to support environmental justice. First, we urge all of you to vote against the proposed rezoning of 2424 South Halstead. 
Prologis is seeking to build a facility there, which Crane reports Amazon will lease. Residents within a half mile of the site are 80% people of color. Furthermore, this is a missed opportunity to develop riverfront property in line with the new equitable transit-oriented development policy. In fact, the plan commission's vote on this rezoning was divided. Second, we are asking council to pass a moratorium on logistics facilities on the south and west sides until it adopts ordinances addressing the inequitable distribution of logistics facilities. These sites, in fact, may not bring substantial economic development benefits. In its Regional Strategic Freight Direction Report, the Chicago Metropolitan Agency for Planning is cautious about freight for local economic development due to negative impacts because other uses actually bring more tax revenue and because many associated jobs may be lost to automation. As many of you know, logistics and other polluting uses continue to concentrate on the south and west sides, which are already inequitably environmentally burdened. In addition to air pollution and quality of life impact, logistics facilities present potentially fatal traffic safety risks especially for pedestrians and bicyclists. Instead, green, livable, and healthy land uses and jobs are possible and can be envisioned together. However, we need to halt inequitable logistics proliferation while working on such collective visions and alternatives. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Lowe. Our next speaker is Mr. George Blakemore. Mr. Blakemore, please press star six on your phone to unmute. Yes, my name is George Blakemore and I'm not happy this morning. It's not oh happy day. When I Yesterday, someone showed me a video of a black woman being abused by the Chicago Police Department. This Chicago Police Department is run by psychopaths, white psychopaths. Chicago is known throughout the world as being one of the most racist cities in the United States. Dr. King made that statement. And it's still going on today with this so-called democratic machine. Just several uh, a weeks ago, we had an election between the Democrats and the Republicans. And I tried to warn my people and tell these were just the same bird with, with, with two different wings, institutional racism. So uh, I'm not happy. I want an explanation, and the black community wants an explanation. When did that happen? What we know. Oh, why did it happen? And why is it's a cover up? What is the definition of transparency? Why would you want to keep us in the dark? Something is inherently wrong here with these black elected officials call the Black Caucus to accept that budget with these white psychopath uh, Altamans and with these Hispanic that advocate for a sanctuary city in the United States of America. We have custom and immigration. This is a country supposed to be of democratic laws. How can you let illegal from Cameroon, uh, uh, Guatemala, or Honduras come over here and use these resources that are very needed in the black community? Public housing, they get it. They get uh, uh, free education, they get it. They, they get food stamps. So I am not happy today. I'm an angry black male. Why do this continuously go on? All of you there are part of the problem, not the solution. And then when our young people keep singing, we shall overcome. When? 
will we overcome? How are we going to overcome this Holocaust that has happened to our people here in the United States of America? Now, Miss Lightfoot, we look for change. I hope that you have hoodwinked us. What is going on down there at this city council? Now, is something, oh, you cracking me off. Mr. Blakemore, thank you for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Yolaine Dolphin. Ms. Dolphin, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Mayor Lightfoot and members of the City Council, thank you for the opportunity to offer some comments in favor of the proposal to rename Outer Lakeshore Drive to DuSable Drive. My name is Yolande Dauphin. I'm an attorney and founding member of the Haitian American Lawyers Association, one of the many organizations which support renaming Lakeshore Drive in honor of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable, the founder of the city of Chicago. Having emigrated to the United States as an 11-year-old, I attended grammar school and high school in Evanston before attending college at Northwestern University and law school at the University of Chicago. At no point in my early education in Evanston was I taught about the contributions of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable to the city of Chicago. Sadly, brown, black and brown children growing up in Chicago may not know Dussab was a black man from the Caribbean country of Haiti who built a home uh, north of the Chicago River near Lake Michigan in 1779, established a trading post and provided for his family through his work as a trader and settler. After all, Dussab's contribution to the history of Chicago were soon forgotten and John Kinsey, the man who purchased Dussab's land, home, bonds, and other belongings in 1800 was credited for years as the founder of the city. And while Dussab is now officially recognized as the founder of our country's third largest city, 241 years after he built the settlement, which later became the city of Chicago, there is no major monument, no holiday, and no street named in his honor. The city council now has an opportunity to recognize the contributions of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable and showcase the city's founder in an appropriate manner. Renaming Lakeshore Drive, the premier road in Chicago, to Du Sable Drive would raise the profile of this black hero and demonstrate to the black and brown children growing up in Chicago that they matter and the contributions they will make to the city and to the world will also be recognized and celebrated. Thank you very much for your attention and my best wishes for the holidays. Thank you, Ms. Dolphin, for your comments. <laughs> Next speaker is Patrick Dior. Uh, Mr. Patrick Dior is not here. Our next speaker is Ms. Elise Hernandez. Bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Good morning, Mayor Lightfoot, City Council members, and Committee on Transportation. Thank you for this opportunity to speak this morning. My name is Elsie Hernandez, founder and president of the Haitian American Museum of Chicago, known as HAMAC. Representing the Black Heroes Matter, one of a coalition of more than 80 organizations and businesses, along with other supporters who are calling for the injustices to Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable, Chicago founding father to be corrected. The museum opened in the uptown community for the last eight years. The museum mission is to share the rich art, culture, and history of the first black nation in the world. Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable came from Saint-Domingue and now called Haiti. He traveled and became the first non-native settler by the lake in Chicago, 
And I must tell you today, ladies and gentlemen, that most of the visitors that come to museums from Chicago and other states of the United States are not aware that of Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable. The city is in a unique position today to set an example by correcting the injustices to the Saab starting today with your vote. And we named the Lakeshore Drive from Hollywood to North Side to 67th Street to the South Side as the Saab Drive. We also needed a monument in a full city holiday in order of the Saab who found it in this great city. But today it's all about the Saab Drive that may say formerly Lakeshore Drive. After 240 years, a Black Heroes Matter coalition can see no reason why all members should not vote for Lakeshore Drive to be renamed in honor of this Black man who founded this great city, Chicago. Your honorable mayor, Lightfoot, members of the council, transportation committee, along with all other council members are in unique and history-making position to do for Chicago what 1,000 before has failed to do. Please do not let this day pass. Let us do it together for this Black Chicago founding father. A sincere thanks to all of you and happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. Our next speaker is Fan Lee. Hello, my name is Fan Lee. I will be living within a two mile radius of four last mile logistics facilities in Bridgeport. I'm here today to express opposition to the rezoning for 2420 South Halstead, record number 02020-3724, which is for the Prologis Amazon warehouse in the 11th ward, because this project will disproportionately harm low income and non-white residents, both environmentally and economically. I encourage everyone to read WBEZ's investigative report titled, Amazon's massive Chicago area expansion was fueled by $741 million from taxpayers. There you'll learn that Chicago gave Amazon six times more in tax incentives for projects built in communities with high concentrations of Black, Latinx, Asian, and low-income residents than those in predominantly white communities. Right now, there is only one Amazon last mile warehouse on the north side but soon there will be five of them on the South and West side. It's shameful for leaders like Commissioner Maurice Cox and Alderman Patrick Daly Thompson to claim that a few hundred minimum wage jobs will revitalize our economy while purposefully hiding corporate tax breaks to effectively hold the community hostage to your garbage economic plans and to claim moral superiority while deepening the worst parts of racial segregation. Economic and environmental development aren't mutually exclusive outcomes. At the CPC hearing, the Metropolitan Planning Council commented, quote, this site holds the potential for mixed use transit oriented development. Such a development could simultaneously create recreation, preserve local biodiversity, and grow the tax revenue generated by the site more than a single warehouse, end quote. The work for environmental justice will extend well past these planned development, which is why residents are demanding stronger oversight processes. First, establish a city department for environmental protection. Two, per the recommendation of the Chicago Department of Public Health, develop an ordinance requiring new and more stringent permitting requirements to prevent cumulative burdens from disproportionately affecting certain neighborhoods. Third, issue a moratorium on all logistics facilities in the city. And lastly, vote no on record 2020-3724. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lee, for your comments. The next speaker is Anna Shabrowski. Hi, my name is Anna Shabrowski. I'm the Community Development Lead with Bridgeport Alliance, a grassroots community group. As Kate Lowe and Fan Lee said, Bridgeport Alliance is asking you to vote no on the rezoning of 2420 South Halstead. The rezoning would allow Prologis to build a last mile logistics facility that would flood our streets with hundreds of delivery vehicles and tractor trailers 24 hours a day, seven days a week. According to the developer's own traffic study on a peak day, which isn't defined and could occur nearly every day, 752 delivery drivers will come into our neighborhood and cross our protected bike lane on Halstead. 446 warehouse employees will commute through our neighborhood's residential streets and 42 semi-trailers will travel through our neighborhood and turn across our protected bike lane to enter and exit the facility. 
The site plans show 11 loading docks for semi-trailers, which means that this 24-hour facility could easily unload even more semi-trailers, uh, up to 264 tractor trailers per day. Uh, the developer and the, is the landlord, and they cannot guarantee that these are new jobs or the quality of these jobs. Uh, they're only saying that this, this is the number of vehicles that will be traveling through our neighborhood now. The areas affected are, are L Station, residential streets, and bicycle lanes. Uh, this is adjacent to the Halstead Orange Line Station, which people walk and bike uh, to for L access and bus access. 20% of Bridgeport residents don't have access to a car, according to CMAP. So safe access to the CTA is essential. Uh, the employee entrance will be on Sen Hour, a residential street directly across from homes in a quiet area with cul-de-sacs where children play in the street. Uh, this will also be adjacent to bicycle lanes on Archer Avenue, which is a designated spoke route and offers bicyclists a, nor a route northeast toward the loop. Uh, this uh, diagonal street is similar it's to the Milwaukee Avenue on the north side. Uh, we'll, uh, have traffic on Halstead Street. It's adjacent to, and uh, the trucks will exit onto Halstead Street, which is a designated crosstown bike route, and Loomis Street to the west, which is a designated neighborhood bike route. Halstead and Loomis are our bike routes across uh, the Chicago River, and those allow us to connect uh, with neighborhoods to the north. Halstead and Archer is already a dangerous intersection for pedestrians and bicyclists. Uh, in 2016, a driver hit me at this intersection, crushing both bones just below my elbow, requiring multiple surgeries and joint replacement. Uh, in the last three years, there have been 10 car pedestrian crashes and 18 car bike crashes in this area right at Halstead and Archer. We have too much traffic violence at this intersection and on the southwest side in general. Please vote no on this rezoning and please adopt a moratorium on rezoning for logistics facilities until there is a citywide plan to distribute them equitably. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jabrowski, for your comments. Our next speaker is Melanie Brown. Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the great mayor, Lori Lightfoot our wonderful aldermen, alderwomen, and wonderful stakeholders. My name is Melanie L. Brown, and I'm speaking on behalf of Black Heroes Matter. We would love to have Lakeshore Drive to be renamed after the founder, John Baptiste Point de Sable. We are all a part of his legacy. We are standing on his shoulders and should at least put our hands together to work to lift his name up. We have part of Lakeshore Drive on the table to be named after the Sable, but he did not discover just part of Chicago. He discovered Chicago, and so having part of Lakeshore Drive will be saying, we only, we only acknowledge you, founder, Desabo, in part. I believe we should name the whole drive after him, and he should have a street named after him as well. Naming anything after the founder should not be taken away from Chicago. We have renamed other streets, buildings, and towns. People hate change, but we, will have the opportunity to get used to it as we have throughout history. Renaming should not be taken away from Chicago. It should be just be showing and adding respect to the founder for there would not have been a Chicago without him. We honor founders in every business, organization, sorority, fraternity, church, this nation, and it should not stop with a city. Let's honor our founder of Chicago, and thank you for allowing me to speak. Happy holidays. And thank you, Mayor Lori Lysa, for acknowledging the de December birthday. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown, for your comments. Our next speaker is Mr. Hamant Patel. Uh, good morning. I'm Hamant Patel. I'm going to comment on resolution R2020. Dash 583. It is an attempt to condemn India for its Citizenship Amendment Act called CAA. First of all, it is full of lies. CAA is being condemned in spite of being one of the most humanitarian laws. Let me explain CAA in a simple language. Let's say one morning, your neighbor along with his wife and two kids 
knock your door. They are scared. They are frightened. Your neighbor said, please help us. Please help us. 50 gangsters are behind us. They already have killed my brother and raped my sister. Now they are behind us. You being a good human allowed them to come inside your home. Five minutes later, the same 50 gangsters knock your door and screaming at you. If you are sheltering your neighbors, you better allow us in your home to stay with you. My question to all city councillors, what would you do in this situation? Please answer this question before passing the resolution. That is what exactly the Indian government has done. The Indian government has provided citizenship to those minority Christians, Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhists, and Jains who were persecuted, tortured, killed, raped by the majority of Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. I am saying majority Muslims of Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Afghanistan. CAA is not about taking away a citizenship of any Muslim of India. It is not going to impact a single Muslim of India or anybody for that matter. CAA is all about giving citizenship to those who need it the most. What is so wrong about it? Why should the Indian government absorb 400 million Muslims who persecuted minorities in their own countries? It is more than America's population. Another important point to note here is that Pakistan had about 24% Hindus in 1947. It is now under 2%. My question is, where did those 22% Hindus go to? Are they killed, converted, or kicked out? Please think about my question. Mr. Patel, thank you very much for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is Mr. Ephraim Martin. Hello. Hello, Mr. Martin. Yes. To Mayor Lightfoot and members of the City Council, good morning. Again, my name is Ephraim Martin, President of Martins International and the of the, of the Black Viewers Matter Coalition, asking for the injustices to Chicago's founding father, Jean-Baptiste Pointe de to be corrected. Today, we are asking Alderman Buchan to have a vote in the next um, Transportation Committee meeting to rename Lakeshore Drive from Hollywood on the north to 67th Street in the south as the Saab Drive. We cannot wait until April. In fact, 2020 should not have passed without this vote. Remember, justice delayed is justice denied. Alderman Upkin, our people found your remarks on WTTW to be to give the Saab an honorary street belittling to the founder. You went on to say, I quote, as an African person who came to our city, for clarification, the Saba did not come to our city. There was no city or village by the river at Lake Michigan when he came and started his trading post. The land, with, the land was with us, Chachun, with no one on that site. The indigenous people scattered throughout Illinois and visited and be, um, befriended him this is the Saab land. In 1995, Martins International hosted our African Caribbean Festival of Life on the Saab's original property, City Front Center, on the west side of Navy Pier, a venue that was used for major festival upward of 10,000. Our event attracted 3,000 fans, mainly African Americans. The then Alderman Burton Atari and a few of the residents call our peaceful event an invasion of a private community. Dr. Margaret Barras was in attendance and asked that we move the event to her at the Saba Museum Garden, all because of fear of nothing. Two years earlier, in 1993, the same proposal to rename Lakeshore Drive as the Saba Drive, presented by then Alderman Tony Perkwinkle, was rejected 
with Ayrton Hotel saying the name Gustavo would affect the hotel and that visitors would stop coming to Chicago. So all the men, in fact, what you're saying, unintended, is the same as the panic of Hilton Hotel 27 years ago, that the name of the Saba black man will chase tourists away and stop the rich people from driving on the, the Saba Drive. That is a part of systemic racism, which we the people will not allow anymore. The more, comp the more compromised proposal is for the outer drive, which is fully endorsed by the Black Eagles matter. It includes little or no residential address change and should make all council members and the people of Chicago proud. Again, Alderman Brookings, we urge you to call. Thank you very much for your comments. However, your time has expired. Our next speaker is James Burns. Good morning, council members and Madam Lightfoot, my name is James Burns. I'm the president and founder of South Branch Park Advisory Council. We're a community-led volunteer 501c3 organization focused on inclusive use of the parks located along the South Branch of the Chicago River and advocate to use the river as a connector between people and communities rather than a divider. We are based out of Park 571 at the Genie Gang designed Eleanor Street Boathouse. This location is at the confluence of the South Branch of the River, Sanitary and Ship Canal, and Bubbly Creek. I'm also a Bridgeport resident and citizen of the city of Chicago. I come before this body today to discuss the proposed, proposed development by Prologist along the South Branch of the Chicago River. This development and the conversation around it began in the summer of 2019. Just a few months prior to this conversation starting, my organization released the framework plan for South Branch Parks. In this plan, we outlined a vision for the future of our small corner of the city. This followed extensive community engagement and feedback that brought together hundreds of people and took nearly a year to complete. This prologist site is a few short blocks from the nexus of our plan. While we acknowledge the proposed development will bring jobs and economic opportunity to this underutilized piece of property, and the developer has committed to connect the riverfront walk on the eastern and western portions of the site, which is in line with our plan, we believe there is more work to be done. My organization has been in contact with our local aldermen, but we have had no meaningful engagement with any other party associated with this development. In contrast, our plan, my organization's plan, documents how many people we connected with and where they're from. We connected to over 100 people at our largest event. Bridgeport and Pilsen were by far the most represented communities. I haven't seen anything regarding this development representative of Pilsen, and if so, the parties involved haven't shared anything that demonstrates as much. Despite this, I remain optimistic that this site and all interested parties will engage in greater dialogue with the community, especially as the Community Benefits Agreement is finalized. As logistics and last mile distribution centers continue to help the Chicago economy grow, I urge the city to hold meaningful conversations with stakeholder organizations. And again, I urge the city and all the people wishing to do business with the city to remember that residents and community-based organizations have a voice and it should be heard. We are here and we can strengthen developments just like this one. And we were, when we are left out and diminished, it makes us wonder why and rightfully so. Happy holidays and thank you all for your service to the city of Chicago. Thank you, Mr. Burns, for your comments. Our next speaker is Linda Hudson. Hello. Hello, Ms. Hudson. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Good morning, Mayor Lightfoot and City Council members. My name is Linda Hudson and I live in the 18th Ward. Seven residents of the 18th Ward asked that I speak before you today. A resident of the 8th Ward has a petition currently circulating, and that petition is requesting that Alder Woman Michelle Harris meet with her constituents on a regular basis on so many community issues, but basically the increase in violence in the ward. I never thought I, that I would see the day when taxpayers would have to circulate a petition to have a meeting with an 
local elected official, not a congressman, not a senator, but a local alder person. Alderman Harris' answer to meeting with the residents is to co-sponsor a resolution to the city council today, calling for a public hearing on efforts to curb the rising, rising number of carjackings in the city. That is not good enough. The petition that's circulating, and it's only been circulating a few days, has over 1,300 signatures on it. For those of you listening and waiting on your elected officials to leave, you be the leader. Today at 7 p.m., the residents of the 8th Ward are holding our own town hall meeting. Because stalling and co-sponsoring the resolution today did not stop the carjacking that happened yesterday, will not stop them that happened, that's going to happen today, or those that are going to happen tomorrow. We urge you, Alderman Harris, to do your job and meet with your constituents. Thank you all for listening, and have a safe and happy holiday. Thank you, Ms. Hudson, for your comments. Your Honor, there are no further speakers who have timely signed up for the public comment period. All right. <clears throat> Uh, this concludes the uh, public comment period. We're now moving to resolutions. Uh, Madam today President, we have- Madam President, this is Alderman Maldonado. Just want to be recognized as, pres as being present, please. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Alderman Maldonado. Thank you. Your presence will be reflected as of this moment uh, in the record. <clears throat> uh, as I was stating, <clears throat> we are now moving on to resolutions. We have two resolutions today, a congratulatory retirement resolution uh, for Tim Samuelson and a resolution to recognize International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Mitchell. <clears throat> Alderman Mitchell, are you there? Alderman Harris, uh, can I get a motion? I'm experiencing technical difficulties. Oh, here. there you are. Okay. Is there, is, there, is there a motion, Alderman Mitchell? Madam President, I move for temporary suspension of the rules for the immediate consideration of these resolutions. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Uh, in the interest of respecting <clears throat> the time, we will forego the formal reading of the resolutions in their entirety and instead hear remarks uh, from City Council. Uh, the first is a resolution congratulating Tim Samuelson, the city's cultural historian, on his retirement. Um, I believe that Mr. Samuelson uh, is with us uh, today. Uh, are there members that would like to speak uh, to uh, this resolution? Uh, the chair recognizes Chairman Dow. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. Um, hi, Tim. I can't see you on the, I can't see you, but um, I just want to wish you well. Very short comment. I want to wish you well in your retirement. I have uh, three things I want to uh, congratulate you on or just thank you for. Um, one, I want to thank you for raising up the uh, history of the Black metropolis uh, within the Department of Planning and Development. Um, in those days when it was not uh, very fashionable to think about uh, the Black metropolis as a historic district. I think that the um, knowledge that you uh, presented and the enthusiasm that you showed was the difference between um, uh, a historic district being sort of in the background and then moving to a more prominent position within the city of Chicago and it was uh, because of your work and the work of people in the community who you work so successfully with to get that done. Um, the second thing I want to thank you for is for the long running uh, Bronzeville exhibit that was in the cultural center um, for making the history, you know, come alive and jump off the pages to uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of people who traverse that long corridor uh, each and every day. I want to thank you for the personal tour um, that you uh, gave me uh, for um, filling in the information that you know I might have been missing on some of the historical 
icons and events of the day. Um, and so uh, thank you for, for that. And I guess the third thing is to, to uh, thank you for your tremendous support um, of the old Mid-South Planning and Development Commission and our work in trying to save uh, the Supreme Life Building, the Overton Building and the B Building. Um, you will never be replaced in my opinion in the Department of Planning and Development or in the city of Chicago. Um, your genuine love for the history of the city of Chicago is apparent and I just want to thank you for uh, being a great public service and for lifting up uh, our entire city. So good luck in the retirement. I'm not sure what you're going to do, um, but um, uh, we'll miss you. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Dow. The chair recognizes Alderman Ed Burke. Alderman Burke, you are still muted. Can you take yourself off? There you go. I tried to unmute it now. We can hear Madam you now. Madam President, thank you very much um, for initiating this uh, recognition of uh, Tim uh, Samuelson. And uh, as I was about to speak, I reached behind me for uh, this uh, a book. Uh, Tim, you may uh, remember that we published this book in uh, 2009 on the uh, 100th anniversary of the uh, City Hall. Truly, uh, Madam President and ladies and gentlemen of the council, uh, when we recognized the assistance we received from Tim in the, uh, in the writing of this uh, uh, book, uh, we were um, fully aware of the fact that uh, Tim is uh, what we say in the law, sui generis, uh, one of a kind. If um, I could amend this resolution to provide that we create a uh, historian uh, emeritus and um, have it spread upon the permanent uh, record of the uh, proceedings, um, I would do so. But as I've come to uh, know and observe uh, Tim over the years, I think it's true to say that one of the last things he's ever sought is any kind of uh, public uh, recognition or, or adulation. Uh, he was uh, always one of those um, typical Chicago uh, officials who labored so uh, long and well in the shadow of other um, uh, people, never seeking any uh, attention. So uh, I wish, uh, uh, Tim, that I could uh, get your uh, contact information. I tried to reach you, but uh, apparently um, you're uh, not getting messages from the city phone, but would you email me or call me and let me know where you can be reached because you are a uh, remarkable uh, Chicago uh, figure that uh, this, this is uh, certainly uh, well-deserved recognition. Again, Madam President, thank you for bringing this to, to the attention of the whole council. Uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Burke. The chair recognizes Alderman Thompson. Yeah. Thank you, Madam uh, President. Uh, I do want to, uh, Tim, thank you for your service uh, to the city of Chicago, uh, what you've done. Um, it's important to study history and know whence we came and uh, Chicago has such a rich history and uh, you're a part of that. You provided that to our visitors, residents and, and to all of Chicago. So on behalf of the residents of the 11th Ward, I wanna thank you and congratulate you uh, on your service. You're a uh, credit to your family and a great public servant. And I wish you all the best going forward in your next endeavors, making more history. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alderman Thompson. Are there others that, that care to speak? Going once, going twice. Tim, let me also add my uh, voice to uh, the congratulations. Uh, we haven't known each other long, uh, but I've really come, come to depend upon uh, you, as you know,
from my uh, various uh, outreach to you um, over these last 18 months. I, I agree with um, all the words that have been said. You are truly a treasure um, to our city. And let me just uh, say a few words about your background for those who don't know. You're a proud graduate of Sutherland High School, uh, also attended Roosevelt uh, University. Um, and I will fast forward and say, we should credit uh, former uh, Cultural Affairs Commissioner Lois Weisberg uh, for recognizing in 2002 uh, that you had something of incredible value to our city. And she then created the position of official cultural historian of the city of Chicago. And we've been the beneficiary uh, of your love of the city, your encyclopedic knowledge of Chicago history um, ever since. Um, there are a few highlights, and I won't be able to do it justice, but I do think it's important to um, note that over your 18 career, 18 year career as Chicago's first and only cultural historian, you had a hand in preserving or restoring the lobby of Union Station, chess records on South Michigan Avenue, Pilgrim Baptist Church, and various other sites in Brownsville uh, to vital the black history. Walt Disney's birthplace in Hermosa, the American School of Correspondence and the Roby House in Hyde Park, along with the Waller Apartments in East Garfield Park and the old Carson Perry Scott Building in downtown Chicago, just to name a few. You will be greatly missed. You are irreplaceable. Um, luckily, I do have your cell phone number and intend to make liberal use of it. Tim, thank you on a job well done. Congratulations. We wish you a happy retirement. And maybe uh, Alderman Burke, we will take you up on your uh, suggestion uh, to appoint Tim as cultural historian emeritus. He has generously agreed to be available to us um, even in his retirement. So Tim, thank you very much. Um, is there a motion to uh, suspend the rules and allow Tim Samuelson to have the floor um, to say whatever remarks he would like in, in, in passing? So moved, Madam President. Alderman. So moved by uh, Alderman Dow, um, hearing no objection. Tim, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much to everybody. And this has been a dream job. And it's easy to have a dream job when you have great material to work with. And that's the city of Chicago. And working with many of you, uh, it has been just a total delight. And I've enjoyed sharing what I can. Now, I'm not going anywhere as far as Chicago goes. Everything's still up here. And it is available for anyone that wants to check in with me, kick some ideas around, ask a question. I'm not giving up on any of it. I'm there for all of you. I thank everyone for an amazing number of years in a, one of the best jobs, in the best city you could ever have. And my heartfelt thanks to everybody. And I take it seriously. I'm here. Reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. All right. The second resolution is a recognition of International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Um, and we'll go straight to um, remarks. Uh, Alderman Mitchell, can I get a motion for passage of, uh, uh, let me ask first, are there any members of the body that would like to speak um, to uh, this resolution? If so, please uh, raise your hand in the, in the chat box. <clears throat> Let me just add a, a few words. We've made tremendous progress in the city of Chicago in understanding um, and recognizing um, disabilities. Um, and disabilities, as you well know, comes in many forms. Some are physical disabilities, some are others. Um, but it is important on this day when people all across the world um, are recognizing International Day of Persons with Disabilities uh, that we take this time to pause to recognize that we have a significant number of people within the city of Chicago um, who um, uh, have disabilities um, and who are living very fulfilled lives um, in spite of that fact. I see that uh, Alderman uh, Matt O'Shea would like to be recognized. Alderman O'Shea, please, the chair recognizes you. Thank you, Madam President. 
Uh, I too would like to stand in support of this resolution. Um, Alderman Burke could tell us a little bit about the history of uh, persons with disabilities. The Special Olympics movement started here uh, through his wife, the Honorable Ann, Supreme Court Justice Ann Burke, uh, 53 years ago. Uh, of the many things we're very proud of in our city, um, I think that that is at the top of the list. Special Olympics started right here in Chicago at Soldier Field. And uh, Madam President, I'd like to thank you for your efforts to support that important mission and supporting all people uh, with disabilities. But uh, thank you for recognizing such an important event. And uh, we should all do as much as we can for the movement of Special Olympics. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman O'Shea. The chair recognizes Alderman Burke. Uh, Alderman, you're still uh, muted. There you go. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. And uh, Alderman O'Shea is being somewhat modest. Uh, I hope our colleagues understand that he is currently the president of Children's Special Children's Charities, uh, doing a remarkable job in uh, helping to ensure the continued growth and success of that movement. I suppose I might uh, even suggest that uh, the term uh, people with disabilities might uh, better be uh, phrased people with special abilities. That's actually what uh, the movement uh, did beginning in 1968 when, uh, as some of us can remember, people that uh, suffered with um, what some people call uh, disabilities uh, couldn't occupy a role uh, out there in the society that all of us enjoyed. But beginning in 1968, um, with the help of Eunice Kennedy Shriver and the um, Kennedy family, uh, the whole attitude towards um, these uh, people with special abilities changed. And in fact, today it is the uh, largest movement in the entire world to help expose uh, people with these special abilities to the opportunities that other people took for granted. Um, and that germ of uh, development um, began here in the city of Chicago. Uh, Alderman O'Shea mentioned that, that it began at Soldier Field, and certainly it would be, uh, I think, an additional uh, remark uh, that, uh, that Matt would uh, direct to the uh, uh, beautiful uh, Richard Hunt sculpture that exists on the uh, north side of Soldier Field that uh, has a um, eternal flame commemorating the beginning of Special Olympics and that worldwide movement today that began here in Chicago in 1968. Uh, it, if, it, if not for Mayor Richard J. Daley uh, and his support, uh, Dan Shannon and his support, and so many others who have gone on to their eternal rewards, the uh, millions of people that benefit from Special Olympics today uh, would not have that opportunity. So uh, thanks, Solomon O'Shea, for reminding me that uh, I should uh, add a word or two to this uh, uh, resolution. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, let's hope that uh, the next 53 uh, years of Special Olympics will be as successful as the past 53 years. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Burke. And <clears throat> the chair recognizes Alderman La Spada. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to rise in support of this resolution and particularly recognize the organizers and activists of Chicago within the disability community, particularly uh, I want to call out Adam Ballard and Kathleen O'Brien for their work in opening 
my eyes and the eyes of so many others to the very real struggles that disabled Chicagoans face, the lack of access to so much of our public transportation system, the continuing fight for them to have housing that is both fully accessible and deeply affordable. Um, that work continues. And I'm so glad that so many within the disability community lead on that work. I want to call out that the victories in this city that have been won for the disability community have won, been won by the disability community. Folks who have literally laid their bodies on the line for the Chicago that um, I stand in honor of them, the privilege of working with them, and knowing that we're going to continue to work for a city that is fully accessible and meets the needs of everyone with a disability. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Laspada. The chair recognizes Alderman Cardenas. Uh, thank, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I wasn't going to say anything, but I, I think that uh, I want to just give kudos to you for bringing these resolutions. They're so important uh, to give us, a, you know, an insight of, of history. Uh, and obviously, Alderman Burke, uh, such an encyclopedic uh, knowledge of, of, of the city and uh, so many things that have happened here and, and continue to happen. Uh, such a tumultuous year. Uh, that and it, historic uh, as well that, that keeps us in mind and why why we uh, celebrate and, and uh, these, these folks uh, uh, like Tim uh, Samuelson, uh, like John Vinci and uh, thanks Lois uh, uh, Weisberg for having the, the wisdom to appoint him, uh, appoint him to his current job. Um, but again, just kudos to you for for uh, bringing this to us uh, and uh, you know give us an understanding of, of why history is important and to keep uh, our own culture uh, in the city so precious. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman Cardenas. Um, I will just say that as a child of a parent with a disability, uh, disability inclusion is very personal to me. I watched my father struggle to the day he died because of his disability. The economic opportunities that um, were denied and the daily slights and exclusions um, that people with disabilities have to suffer through every single day. As we need to make sure that we understand and continue to challenge ourselves uh, to do better in this city. And really, my father's experience is one of the things that um, made me uh, become an advocate and, and subsequently a lawyer. International Day of Persons with Disabilities provides every Chicago with the opportunity to reflect on our shared obligation and commitment to realizing the rights of persons with disabilities as a matter of basic fairness and justice, and that we have to do more as a community to continue to break down barriers. So I am uh, pleased and grateful uh, to join the body in support of, of this resolution. Alderman Mitchell, can I get a motion for passage of the resolutions? Madam President, I move passage of the two resolutions and nominees. By hearing no objection, uh, so ordered. Alderman Mitchell, is there a motion to return to regular order of business? Yeah, now move we return to the regular order of business. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam Clerk, uh, we're now on communications. Please read um, the communications that have come to you. Series of communications from Her Honor the Mayor to the Honorable the City Council of the City of Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the controller are transmit here with an ordinance designating municipal de depositories for 2021. The people consideration of these ordinances will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of the Commissioner of Transportation, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing execution of an intergovernmental agreement with Metro. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Finance. Commissioner Aviation, I transmit herewith an ordinance authorizing the renewal of an intergovernmental agreement with the Midway Noise, uh, Midway Noise Compatibility Commission. The favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Aviation. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Aviation, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the renewal of an intergovernmental agreement with the O'Hare Noise Compatibility Commission. Favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori E. Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Aviation. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the budget director, I transmit here with a fund 925 amendment. The favorable consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori E. Lightfoot, Mayor, before the Committee on Budget and Government Operations. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing a Class 6 B tax status for property located at 825 South Kilpatrick Avenue. The favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. We're the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing a Class 6 B tax status for property located at 4118-4138 West Lake Street. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. Refer to the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit herewith an ordinance authorizing a Class 6B tax, tax status for property located at 2075 West 43rd Street. The available consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor. Referred to the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit herewith an ordinance authorizing a Class L tax status for property located at 225 West Randolph Street. The favorable consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, to request the Commissioner of Family and Support Services, I transmit herewith a new agreement with Northwestern University to access platform to support innovative learning opportunities for you. The favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Education and Child Development. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Public Health, I transmit here with an ordinance increasing fines for air pollution and fugitive dust violation. Your favorable consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of Commissioner of Planning and Development, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the acquisition of property 8840, 8844, 8850, and 8854 South Commercial Avenue. The favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Assets, Information, and Services, I transmit herewith an ordinance authorizing the execution of a lease agreement with Better Rx Inc. for use as a pharmacy. The favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, referred to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, I request the Commissioner of Assets, Information, and Services. I transmit herewith an ordinance authorizing the execution of a renewal lease agreement with Heartland International Health Center. The available consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, I request the Commissioner of Housing. I transmit herewith an ordinance authorizing the execution of amended redevelopment agreement for the Third Ward Parade of Homes Program. The available consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours. Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, refer to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, I request the Commissioner of Housing, I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the execution of loan agreements, Lazarus Renewal 2 LLC. The favorable consideration of this ordinance be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, refer to the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Mayor's Office of New Americans, I transmit here with it together with Alderman Rodriguez, Rodriguez Sanchez, and Ramirez Rosa, an ordinance amending Chapter 2 173. Of the Municipal Code of Chicago. Favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Immigrant and Refugee Rights. Public safety. With two committee of oh, Peter. Two committees called the matters referred to the Committee on Committees and Rules. Ladies and gentlemen, the request of the Commissioner of Planning and Development. I transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of uh, open space impact fees and associated acceptance of parcels within. Indian Ridge March. Marsh, your favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Laura E. Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Special Events, Cultural Affairs, and Recreation. Ladies and gentlemen, at the request of Commissioners of Housing and Planning and Development, I transmit here with ordinances providing for anti displacement measure for residents. The favorable consideration of these ordinances will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Laura E. Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here with appointments to various special service areas. Your favorable consideration of these appointments be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here with appointments to Chicago Community Land Trust Board. 
Bail consideration of these appointments will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. Ladies and gentlemen, I transmit here with appointments on the Low Income Housing Trust Fund Board. Your favorable consideration of these appointments will be appreciated. Very truly yours, Lori Lightfoot, Mayor, for the Committee on Housing and Real Estate. I, City Clerk Anna Valencia, hereby inform the City Council that the following document was filed in my office. Inspector General Audit's report concerning the Department of Streets and Sanitation Commercial and High Density Residential Buildings Recycling Enforcement. ICD Clerk Valencia also informed the City Council that all those matters which were considered by the City Council at the regular meeting held on November 24, 2020, and which were required by statute to be published in book or pamphlet form, or in one or more newspapers, were published in pamphlet form on December 16, 2020, by being printed in full text and print pamphlet copies in the journey of proceedings of the City Council of the City of Chicago. I also informed the City Council that the ordinances authorizing the issuance of City of Chicago general obligation bonds and additional sales tax obligations for various purposes and the levy and collection of direct annual taxes which were passed by the City Council on November 24, 2020, and which was requested to be published in a special pamphlet form was published in a special pamphlet form on December 3rd, 2020. I City Clerk Valencia also transmit here with the following miscellaneous communications reports requiring, requiring City Council action. Zoning reclassifications of particular areas, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Claims against the City of Chicago, which are referred to the Committee on Finance. Amendment of Municipal Code Section 3-56-500 by extending standard veteran license pilot program until July 31st, 2022, which is referred to the Committee on the Budget and Government Operation. Recommendation by Commission on Chicago Landmarks for designation of Perkins Nordane House at 6106. North Kenmore Avenue, a Chicago landmark, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Recommendation by Commissioner on Chicago Landmarks for designation of Emmett Till and Mammy Till Mobley House at 6427 South Lawrence Avenue as a Chicago landmark, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Recommendation by the Commission on Chicago Landmarks for designation of Illinois Bell Building at 225 West Randolph Street as a Chicago landmark, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Your Honor, that concludes mayoral and clerk communications. Well, next up is the committee com uh, reports. We'll start with the Committee on Finance. Chairman Wagus back. Thank you, Madam President. I'm reporting for the City Council's Committee on Finance, which met on December 14, 2020. Item number one on the agenda is an ordinance authorizing redevelopment and loan agreements with, and the issuance is up up to $12 million in multifamily housing revenue bonds for Paseo Boricua Arts LLC for the construction of affordable housing at 2709 to 2715 West Division Street in the 26th Ward. The item was approved by the committee by voice vote, um, but if no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move to concur with the recommendation of the committee by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Alderman La Spada. Aye. Alderman La Spada is an aye. Alderman Hopkins. Aye. Alderman Hopkins is an aye. Alderman Dow. Aye. Alderman Dow is an aye. Alderman King. Aye. Alderman King is an aye. Alderman Harrison. Aye. Alderman Harrison is an aye. Alderman Sawyer. Aye. Alderman Sawyer is an aye. Alderman Mitchell. Aye. Alderman Mitchell is an aye. Alderman Harris. Aye. Alderman Harris is an aye. Alderman Beal. Yep. Alderman Beal is an aye. Alderman Zalowski Garza. Aye. Alderman Zalowski Garza is an aye. Alderman Thompson. Aye. Alderman Thompson is an aye. Alderman Cardness. Aye. Alderman Cardness is an aye. Alderman Quinn. Aye. Alderman Quinn is an aye. Alderman Burke. Aye. Alderman Burke is an aye. Alderman Lopez. Aye. Alderman Lopez is an aye. Alderman Coleman. Aye. Alderman Coleman is an aye. Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Moore is an aye. Alderman Curtis. Aye. Alderman Curtis is an aye. Alderman O'Shea. Aye. Alderman O'Shea is an aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Taylor is an aye. Alderman Brookins. Aye. Alderman Brookins is an aye. Alderman Rodriguez. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez is an aye. Alderman Tavares. Aye. Alderman Tavares is an aye. Alderman Scott. Aye. Alderman Scott is an aye. Alderman Cicho Lopez. Aye. Alderman Cicho Lopez is an aye. Alderman Maldonado. Aye. Alderman Maldonado is an aye. Alderman Burnett. Aye. 
Aye. Alderman Burnett is an aye. Alderman Irvin. Aye. Alderman Irvin is an aye. Alderman Talaferro. Aye. Alderman Talaferro is an aye. Alderman Raboyas. Aye. Alderman Raboyas is an aye. Alderman Cardona. Aye. Alderman Cardona is an aye. Alderman Ragaspack. Aye. Alderman Ragaspack is an aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez. Aye. Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez is an aye. Alderman Austin. Aye. Alderman Austin is an aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa. Aye. Alderman Ramirez Rosa is an aye. Alderman Villegas. Aye. Alderman Villegas is an aye. Alderman Mitz. Aye. Alderman Mitz is an aye. Alderman Spasado. Nick Spasado is an aye. Alderman Spasado is an aye. Alderman Nugent. Aye. Alderman Nugent is an aye. Alderman Vasquez. Aye. Alderman Vasquez is an aye. Alderman Napolitano. Aye. Alderman Napolitano is an aye. Alderman Riley. Aye. Alderman Riley is an aye. Alderman Smith. Aye. Alderman Smith is an aye. Alderman Tunney. Aye. Alderman Tunney is an aye. Alderman Gardner. Aye. Alderman Gardner is an aye. Alderman Kaplan. Aye. Alderman Kaplan is an aye. Alderman Martin. Aye. Alderman Martin is an aye. Alderman Osterman. Aye. Alderman Osterman is an aye. Alderman Haddon. Aye. Alderman Haddon is an aye. Alderman Silverstein. Aye. Alderman Silverstein is an aye. P Peter? Your Honor, there are 50 yeas, no nays. Thank you. Please uh, mute your phone. Thank you. Uh, uh, Alderman, Thompson. The, the, Alderman Thompson on uh, the motion for reconsideration. Uh, Alderman Thompson, you're still on. Uh, Alderman Thompson, you're still on mute. On mute. Okay. Hello. There you go. Here you go. Sorry. Uh, sorry, Madam President. I motion to reconsider that first vote of the Finance Committee. All those in favor of the motion for reconsideration, signify by saying aye. Those opposed, say nay. Nay. Oh. nay. <clears throat> the motion for reconsideration um, is uh, denied. Chairman Wegas, back. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Item two is an ordinance authorizing the issuance of bond inducement language regarding tax exempt housing revenue bonds issuance for the acquisition and development of properties at 1800 to 1812 West Roosevelt Road and 1801 Greenshaw Street by the Chicago Lighthouse Residences for LLC. The forthcoming issuance will be for up to $7 million in tax exempt housing revenue bonds. This item was approved by the committee by the roll call used to establish quorum with the exception that Alderman Austin would like to be, was recorded as a no vote and would like that reflected in the record here today. Um, if no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the committee on finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you. Item number three is an ordinance uh, authorizing the city of Chicago to enter into and execute redevelopment and subordination agreements with Greater Auburn Gresham Development Corporation and Greater Auburn Gresham Support Corporation, supported by tax increment financing and a master lease for office space and build outs at 839 to 845 West 79th Street. The item was approved by the committee by the roll call vote used to establish quorum. If no one wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, I'm sorry. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman David Moore. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first of all, I, I have to say um, thank you to Carlos Nelson, um, GAGDC, the Greater Auburn Gresham Development Corporation. He's the executive director, his leadership and the vision for this. But you can have a vision, but if you don't have someone to help you reach that vision, it can sometimes, and had a vision come true, can sometimes be difficult. So um, to the mayor and her team, I wanna thank you so much for your commitment um, to Invest Southwest. And, and this um, development here, as, the, as they were able to get some CARES Act monies as well, as they were um, able to win an award from, um, 
I think it was the Prisker Foundation to get some money from this and then work with our, the city of Chicago to get TIF dollars um, to bring this development, this much needed development to the 79th Street corridor, which is then also sparking other development along that corridor. So um, your commitment, Mayor, to invest Southwest and doing the things that we need to bring development to our community, um, this is just one part of that that will make a difference for our entire city. So I just want to say um, thank everyone that's a part of this as we bring this to um, um, fruition. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alderman Moore. I believe there's a, a pending motion. Chairman Wagus back. And, and um, Gary, go ahead. You want to renew the motion? Yes. If um, and no one else wishes to speak, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. Thank you. Item number four is an ordinance authorizing the Department of Housing to enter into and execute an intergovernmental agreement with the Illinois Housing Development Authority to reallocate a portion of the city's unused tax exempt bond volume cap for 2020 to facilitate financing of affordable housing or qualifying mortgage loans by IDA. The item was approved by the committee by the roll call vote used to establish quorum. And if there's no one that wishes to speak on this matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you. And uh, Madam President, item five is an ordinance authorizing the Department of Water Management to enter into a preliminary water supply agreement with the City of Joliet. The item was approved by the committee by the roll call vote used to establish quorum in the committee. And if no one wishes to speak on the matter, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, item number six is an ordinance authorizing the Department of Planning uh, to execute the 59th amending agreement with Summer Core 504 Incorporated as administrator, authorizing tax increment financing to TIF SPIF new project areas of 51st uh, Archer and Stevenson uh, Brighton redevelopment or development areas and various established small business improvement funds. The item was approved by the committee by the roll call vote used to establish quorum with the exception that Alderman Lopez voted no. If no one else wishes to speak on this matter, uh, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider. The chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I wish to be recorded as no on this item as well. As it's recorded before the full council, I just want to reiterate my objections that I made in the council and the committee that many of the things that we are looking at are long term, do not necessarily help our businesses in the here and now. The $60 million that we're being asked to give to this program and ask that DPD further continue the discussion on how to help our businesses get through COVID, not just plan for after COVID. Thank you, Madam President. There's a pending motion. Um, Alderman Lopez is. Uh, Objection is noted. Um, hearing no further objection, so ordered. Thank you. Item number seven is a re referral of a proposed ordinance amending the municipal code by adding new chapter 3 10 to a joint committee of the Committee on Finance and Budget and Government Operations. The re referral was approved by the committee by the roll call used to establish quorum, with the exception that Alderman Lopez. Would like to be recorded at, voted no and would like to be recorded as voting no if no one wishes to speak on the matter i move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote on the committee on finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider hearing no objection so ordered madam president item number eight is regarding monthly settlements through the law department these will be placed on file with the clerk Items 9 and 10 consist of authorizations for the payment of various small claims against the city and denials of payments of various small claims against the city. If there's no objection, I ask that these items be placed on the omnibus. Very no objection, so ordered. Item number 11 uh, consists of three orders authorizing the Corporation Council to enter into and execute settlement orders in the cases of uh, 
A11A, Jamel Island, Trezell Island, and Janelle Island versus City of Chicago in the amount of $295,000. Uh, B, Patrick Bowden versus City of Chicago and City of Chicago et al. cited as 20C0929 in the amount of $162,500. And C, Denigma Howard versus City of Chicago et al. cited as 19C1281 in the amount of $300,000. Uh, 11A through C were approved by the committee by the roll call used to establish quorum with the following exceptions. On item 11B, Alderman Napolitano voted no and would like to be recorded as no here. And on, um, pardon me, Alderman Cardona and Alderman Haddon would like to be recorded as voting no on 11C. And unless there are other aldermen who wish to be recorded, no, I move passage by the first most favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance report and the corresponding unsuccessful motion to reconsider with these exceptions. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Lopez. Thank you, Madam President. I wish to be recorded no on item C as well. Um, Alderman Lopez, I don't know if you're able to hear Chairman Wegas back, uh, but he does note um, your objections as part of his committee report. If he didn't note the objection regarding item B, um, that is now noted as soon as he speaks it, but we will make sure that we now have double, triple um, regarding your-, your uh, Madam, Madam Yeah, Madam President, I think uh, Alderman Lopez, was that item C? An objection to item B was for item C. Do you? Um, Alderman, I couldn't sure, hear you. I'm sorry, I'm Alderman, sorry. we were having difficulty hearing you. Is you, are you asking to be recorded as a no on item C as well? Is that what you're saying? Or item B? Only C. Only, only C. C. I did not okay. have an objection to B. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the chair recognizes Alderman Vasquez. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd also like to be recorded as a no on item C. So noted. The chair recognizes Alderman Sicho Lopez. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I also like to be recognized as a no for item 11C. So noted. The chair recognizes Alderman Cardenas. Oh, uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I believe this item was debated in, in, in finance and uh, understandably uh, some of my colleagues are, are, are voting no on that. Um, yeah, I, I think reforms are, are in order in terms of contact uh, um, in, in the school system as much. I, I, I support it because I think you're minimizing risk uh, for the taxpayers, um, but uh, you have a long way to, ways to go to minimize the risk for taxpayers even further by not actually having these cases uh, be brought up against the city. And uh, thank you for those remarks. Thank you, Alderman Cardenas. The chair recognizes Alderman Haddon. Thank you, Madam President. Um, and thank you, Chairman Wagas, back for recording my no vote. Um, just to just to comment on this, I appreciate Alderman Cardenas' uh, point, of course, of looking at economic liability to the city, and also, especially given light of the case of Ms. Anjanette Young, we have so far to go um, as a city, and I find it very, very disturbing. The 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 situation we find our in find ourselves in with as a city, our law department asking people to settle uh, when great harm has been done to them, um, especially when that harm is done to black women, um, people of color, um, disabled people and other marginalized populations. So this no vote is, is a uh, recognizing that Ms. Howard deserves more um, than what we are giving and asking her to settle for. Thank you. So I, I feel compelled in light of the last comment to, to say this, all of these plaintiffs um, have lawyers and are represented by counsel. We deal with counsel as an ethical responsibility. We never deal directly with the plaintiffs. And uh, in many instances, and we, I don't know this, the circumstances underlying these three cases, but in many instances, the plaintiff's lawyers themselves come to the law department asking for settlement. So I don't think it's accurate or fair for comments to say that we are in effect forcing plaintiffs uh, to settle. The courts are open. If plaintiffs do not want to settle, they should not. And that is the advice that plaintiff's counsel has to have in conversation with their client. 
So I, I, I think it's, if, we, if you wanna dig down into details of each of these, you should, but a blanket um, condemnation of the law department, which the last comment suggested, I think is irresponsible. And frankly, uh, and based on my experience, wildly inaccurate. I agree, Madam President. I don't know who that comment was. But Alderman Austin. Yeah, thank you, Alderman. Alderman Spazzato too agrees with you. I see that- uh, Madam so President. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, but there's, there's a, somebody who's raised their hand. Alderman Sicho Lopez, briefly. I'll be brief, but I also feel compelled to comment um, in light of the, the cases of police brutality that we continue to see across the city. In the case of Ms. Young, I do think it's important that the city recognizes that we have a systemic issue with police brutality. Ms. Young called out the police 43 times, 43 times to denounce that this was an illegal and wrong mistaken rate in her house. So again, I feel compelled. Alderman, Alderman I'm, I'm sorry. I have, sorry, I have, I have, I have my five Alderman, minutes. Alderman, Madam Chair, I have five Alderman, minutes. I have Alderman, five minutes. You commented. Alderman, I, I also we have three comment. matters that are up on before the council. You have three matters that are up before the council. Those are the three matters um, that are before the council. If you want to talk about a separate issue, there will be a time and a place for that. But you are out of order, sir. We have I'm not in order. I have, I have my, out of according order. to rules, I have time to comment, Madam Chair. You have your time to comment. I have my five minutes comment, Madam Chair. And as I said, I do think that when you talk about ethics, it is very important that we do indeed talk about ethics. It was unacceptable what we saw in, in, in the media last night. I think Thank it's you, urgent. And I think if there's a time and a, a place, Thank I do hope and I, I hold you accountable, Mayor, to have a hearing on the matter on the Public Safety Committee and the Health Committee because the public deserve an explanation of what happened and why the, why the law department was trying to sue the plaintiff because she was trying to make this public as is her right. So again, uh, Madam Chair, with all the respect, let's talk about happens. ethics. Let's talk all about ethics and accountability. You. you do not know the facts, but that doesn't let you, uh, stop you from making wildly inaccurate comments. We will be addressing this issue in total after the city council meeting, but I, I would appreciate if you and others who have had an interest in this, as everyone should, because the, the images portrayed on that video were upsetting, no question whatsoever. But I, what I would ask you is to actually get the facts, sir. You, you right. spend a significant amount of your time talking about issues for which you have no facts. And that is highly problematic. It is irresponsible. It undermines your fiduciary out of order. Out of order. Not only to the council. This is out of to, order. But to um, the larger city of the, Chicago. You are out of order. I allowed you to make a comment. We have three issues that are up right now. Ma Madam President, personal tax on members of this body is out of order. Uh, I assume that's our, uh, that's all. Madam, Alderman, uh, Alderman Madam personal attack. Madam. Madam President, uh, can we go? I'm asking, Madam President, I'm asking all. Hold on one second. Facts are personal hold attacks. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, folks. Facts are facts are always relevant. And Alderman Sicho Lopez, anybody else who wants to talk about the matter that's been portrayed in the public, what I'd ask you to do is actually get the facts. We have a city council meeting. There are three matters that are up. Those are the three matters that we're talking about right now. If anybody else wants to speak on those three matters that are before the body, then I will recognize you. Outside of that, you are out of order. Chairman Wagesbeck, you have a motion. Yes, uh, Madam President. I'm gonna re, uh, renew my motion with the exception, read the exceptions here today uh, on these three cases, just items A, B, and C that were mentioned. Um, on item B, the Bowden case, Alderman Napolitano would like to be recorded as no. And items, uh, item C in the Howard case, I have Alderman Lopez, Vasquez, Sigcho Lopez, Cardenas, I'm sorry, not Cardenas, uh, Cardona and Haddon voting no. And I renew my motion. With those uh, no votes noted, um, Hearing no further objection, uh, the motion is granted.
Madam President, this concludes the report of the Committee on Finance. Alderman Dow, Committee on Budget. Uh, thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council. Reporting for your Committee on the Budget and Government Operations, which held a meeting on December 9th, 2020, the committee recommends passage of the following items. Item number one, an ordinance concerning the First Amendment to Intergovernmental Agreement with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago for the extension of time to complete flood protection and runoff reduction pilot study in the Chatham area covering the 6th, 8th, and 9th wards. I move passage of the item by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Uh, Madam President, the second item on the agenda is an ordinance introduced by Alderman Tom Tunney of the 44th Ward, approving the transfer of funds within the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards for the year 2020. Same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so order. That concludes my report, Madam President. Thank you. The next committee is a committee on rules. Chairman Harris. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Reporting for your committee on committee rules, which met Friday, December 11th, 2020 at 10 a.m. The committee recommends the passage of the following items. Item one is a correction of the journal proceedings for September 9th, 2020. I move passage of this item by the first most favorable roll call of the Committee on Finance and the unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. Item two is a proposed ordinance amending Municipal Code Section 3-8-050 to recognize the deaths of Chicago police officers, firefighters, paramedics, emergency medical technicians, from COVID-19 as presumed contractor while in the performance of their duties. Um, this, the committee recommend that this item be referred to the Committee on Budget and Governmental Act Operations. I move passage of this recommendation by the same motion if there's no objections. Hearing no objections, so order. Item three is a proposed resolution calling for the establishment of the Chicago Police Personnel and Resource Reallocation Pilot Program this, uh, the committee recommends that this item be referred to the Committee on Public Safety. I move passage of the recommendation by the same motion if there's no objections. Hearing no objections, so ordered. And the final item is a proposed resolution calling for hearings on expanded community-based domestic, sexual, and gender-based violence prevention programming. The committee recommended that this item be re-referred. Um, Public safe to public safety with the chief sponsor's approval. Um, I move passage of this recommendation by the same motion if there's no objections. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Harris. Next is the Com Committee on Contracting Oversight. Chairman Austin. Madam Chairman, you're still muted. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'd like to be uh, called in on the last year. Um, uh, I left the notes, uh, so I will get them before you finish committee hearings. All right, I will, I will move you to uh, the bottom, sir, ma'am. Thank you. Next up is the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology uh, Development, Chairman Viegas. <clears throat> Morning, Madam President, um, and members of the City Council reporting for the Committee on Economic Capital and Technology Development, which held a meeting on December 7th, 2020, and reconvened on December 14th. The committee recommends passage of the following items. Items 1 through 10 are a series of appointments to various special service areas. Justin Fedick, Marianne Surapas, and George Revelidis as members of the SSA No. 16 Greek Town Hostet Commission. Elizabeth Fauld as member of SSA North Hosted Commission, Holly S. Loderick and Jonathan Gordon as members of SSA number 23 Clark Street Lincoln Park Commission, Paul Purell as member of SSA number 48 Old Town Commission, and Nancy uh, Stenick, Gregory Gutman, and George Rumsey 
as members of SSA number 61 Hyde Park Commission. I move passage of these items by the first favorable roll call vote of the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objections, so order. Items 11 through 62 and item 64 are a series of ordinances for tax levies, scope of services, budgets, and management agreements for each special service area with the following distinctions. Items 43, uh, item 43 is an ordinance for the enlargement of boundaries, extended tax levy period, scope of additional uh, special services, budget and management agreements for special service area number 19, Howard Street Commission. Item 54 is an ordinance for the extension on an imposition of <clears throat> tax levy period, increase of tax levy, scope of services, budget and management agreement for special service area number 54, Sheridan Road Commission. Item 58 is an ordinance for the establishment special service area number 75, Oak Street authorization of tax levy, scope of services, budget and management agreement. And item 59 is an ordinance for the amendment of tax of the tax levy, scope of services, budget and management agreement for special service area number 16, Greek Hostet Commission. And please let it be noted that Alderman Burke will abstain from voting on items 12 and 31. The Greater Southwest Development Association is the service provider for both special service areas. Within the preceding 12 months, Alderman Burke practiced law with other attorneys in a law firm. Other attorneys in the firm represented Greater Southwest Development Association with the preceding 12 months in property tax appeals at the Cook County Assessor, Cook County Board of Review, at Illinois Property Tax Appeal, um, Property Tax Appeal Board relating to various properties. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection. Hearing no objection, so order. The following items are being held in committee. Ordinance 202-5896 and 02-0-870. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my report. Thank you, uh, Chairman Viegas. Next is the Committee on Housing and Real Estate, Chairman Osterman. Thank you, Madam President and members of the City Council. Uh, reporting for your Committee on Housing and Real Estate, which held a virtual meeting uh, on December 8th, the committee has a series of reports recommending passage of the following. Item number one is a loan agreement with North Park Village LP, an associated ground lease agreement with EHDOC North Park Village Charitable Corp for a portion of North, North Park campus to develop affordable elderly housing in Building H at 5801 North Pulaski. Um, Alderman Samantha Nugent would like to be recognized on this, and after that, I would like to move passage of this first item by the first favorable roll call, the Committee on Finance and Associated Unsuccessful Motion to Reconsider. But uh, Alderman Nugent wanted to be recognized. The Chair recognizes Alderman Nugent. <clears throat> thank you, Madam President. Um, I'd like to thank Commissioner Navarra and Jim O'Connell from Housing for helping with this project. The, the North Park Village campus truly is a crown jewel of the Northwest side. Uh, this village once served as a municipal tuberculosis sanatorium. So the campus now has beautiful green space, a waterfall, parks, trails, and is home to many seniors. Uh, the historic buildings on the campus were converted to the North Park Village Senior Apartments, offering affordable senior housing options for seniors from across the city. Today's ordinance charts the course for the final building to get much needed renovations, upgrades, and historic preservation. In October 2019, I met with the seniors who called this building home and brought partners together from housing, DPD, AIS, and the Park District to talk about the future of their building and the hopes for the rehab. Uh, now over a year later, we are one step closer to ensuring these seniors have the security of nice, safe, clean, and well-maintained apartments. Uh, just this summer, I'm so proud that we as a council moved an ordinance to ensure that the land of North Park Village will forever be protected by a conservation easement. Uh, today, I'm asking for your support for affordable senior housing and the renovation of the Building H. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. There's a, a pending motion um, and no objection, so so ordered. Thank you. Item number two is amendment to the Municipal Code sections 2-44-090 and 2-44-100. To extend the duration of the near north, near west, and Milwaukee corridor affordable housing pilot area ordinances until June 30th, 2021. I make the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. 
Item number three is a negotiated sale of vacant city-owned property at 4444 South St. Lawrence to Rosemary Weish. I make the same motion if there's no objection. There no objection, so ordered. Item number four is the sale of city-owned property at 4918 West Adams Street to, to David Hickman. I make the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. And the, item number five is a negotiated sale of vacant properties at uh, 11700, 11702, 11708 South Buffalo Avenue and 11701 South Burley Avenue to NP Avenue O LLC. I make the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Madam President, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next up is the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Chairman Mitz. Thank you, Madam President. Oh, members of the city council. Right I'm reporting for the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. We held a virtual meeting on December 9, 2020, and the following items were passed by the committee. Item number 02020-5783, an ordinance authorizing issuing of various temporary relief measures to business. Office of the Mayor, Department of Business and Consumer Protection, Alderman Mitz, Hopkins, Harris, Cardinals, Barnett, Smith, Gardner, Kappelman, and Martin. Uh, Madam President, I would like to um, be able to speak on this matter if none of my colleagues wish to speak at this time. If, uh, if please, not, please, please proceed, uh, Chairman Mitz. Thank you. As the Chairman of the City Council Committee on Licensing and Consumer Protection, I stand in strong support of this ordinance, uh, supporting the business community, struggling like so many other industries to survive the challenge caused by the global Corona-19 pandemic. And during our recent December 9th license committee meeting, we had an opportunity to make a difference. We passed a key ordinance, which provide a various of temporary release measures to assist these business. Today, in view of the challenge, challenging economy climate, Chicago's business need our support more than ever. So I'm proud to have worked with you, Mayor Lyford, to provide an array of relief to the city business community. And I look forward to continuing to do everything in our power to deliver support. I move that the city council incur in the recommendation of the license committee and pass this item by the same roll call vote as item number one of the committee on finance report and the same unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Item number two, 02020 5786, an ordinance authorized the execution of an agreement with the Chicago Cubs Baseball Club, LLC, Office of Mayor and Office of Budget and Management. I move passes of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. We had three ordinances regarding moratoriums in the various wards, the 27th, 38th, and the 40th ward. I move passes of these items by the same motion. If there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This concludes my report for the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. All right, next up is the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, Chairman Burnett. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, reporting for your Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety, for which a meeting was held on Thursday, November 12, 2020. Before the committee, there were 145 items. There were 145 routine traffic items that passed and zero routine items that did not pass. I move for passage of these items in the omnibus. That concludes my report. Thank you, Madam President. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you, Chairman. Next is a committee on transportation and public way, Chairman Brookins. Hey, 
Good morning, uh, Madam President and members of the City Council. Uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, Merry Christmas to you and your family and all of the families of the members of the City Council. And may God uh, keep you and keep you health and healthy and safe uh, during this pandemic and throughout the holiday season. Reporting for your Committee on Transportation and Public Way, a meeting which was held on December 10th, 2020, the following ordinances will pass by majority of the members present. Uh, pages th two through 16 include 179 ordinances for grants of privileges introduced by the local alderman from wards one through six, eight, 10 through 12, 14 through 15, 17, 19, 22, 25 through 32, and 35 through 50. Under Rule 14 of the Rules of Order and Procedure of the Chicago City Council, Alderman Burke abstains from voting on the following items, grants of privileges, 02020-5666, and 02020-5595, due to practicing law with other attorneys in a law firm. Other attorneys in the firm represented the American Dental Association, Michael and Michael Hare, and Northwestern Memorial Hospital within the preceding 12 months in property tax appeals at the Cook County Assessor, Cook County Board of Review, Circuit Court of Cook County, and the Illinois Property Tax Appeal Board relating to these properties. On page 17 include 10 ordinances the canopies introduced by the local alderman from wards 2, 6, 40, and 42. Pages 18 and 19 include one amendment and one ordinance for miscellaneous items introduced by local alderman from wards 8, 17, 19, 27, 30, 32, 41, 45, and 47. On page 20 includes one vacation ordinance located in the 14th ward. On page 20 includes also one easement located in the 27th ward. There was also a subject matter hearing regarding uh, renaming Lakeshore Drive. And if there's no, which no vote was taken. And if there's no objection, I move passage of these items by the last most favorable roll call vote on the Committee on Finance and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you very much, Madam President. That concludes my report. Thank you, sir. And next up is the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Chairman Tunney. Madam President and members of the City Council presenting a series of reports for your Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards, which held a meeting on December 1st, 2020. These reports are grouped for convenience. The following items were passed by the majority of members present. Page one contains a text amendment of municipal code section 16-8-070 to further regulate rezoning in conversion areas. I move passage of this item by the last most favorable roll call vote of the finance committee report and associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Pages one through 13 contain various map amendments in the first, second, third, 11th, 12th, 17th, 21st, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 35th, 38th, 40th, 41st, 42nd, 43rd, 44th, 46th, 47th, 48th, and 50th wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection, noting that Alderman Cicho Lopez and Alderman Rodriguez Sanchez would like to be recorded as voting no on document number 
020203-3724 for the property commonly known as 2424 South Halsted Street. With um, those- uh, yeah. Yes, Madam President. With those uh, uh, objections noted, uh, hearing no further objections, so ordered. Uh, next, page 13 contains two demolition orders for non-contributing buildings in the 46th Ward Uptown Square Historical District. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Page 14 contains various large signs over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade in the 3rd, 13th, 18th, 20th, 22nd, 25th, 27th, 31st, 35th, 41st, 42nd, 43rd, 44th, 45th, and 50th wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there is no objection. There are no objections, so ordered. Uh, Madam President, that concludes my first report. I'll move on to the second report. Uh, Madam President, members of the City Council, prevent a series of reports for your committee on zoning, landmarks, and building standards, which held a meeting on December 15th, 2020. These reports are grouped for convenience. The following items were passed by the majority of members present. Page one contains a text amendment of Municipal Code Section 2-120-910 by modifying fines and remedies for disrepair of historical and architectural landmarks. I move passage of this item by the last most favorable roll call vote of the Finance Committee report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so order. Pages one through eight contain various map amendments in the first, 11th, 16th, 19th, 24th, 25th, 26th, 32nd, 34th, 35th, 36th, 41st, 43rd, 44th, 46th, 47th, 49th, and 50th wards. I move passage of these items by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Page eight contains one historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 1035 South Claremont Avenue in the 28th Ward. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so order. Page eight contains one large sign over 100 square feet in area, 24 feet above grade in the 11th Ward at 645 West Roosevelt Road. I move passage of this item by the same motion if there's no objection. Hearing no objection, so order. Madam President, that concludes the second page of my report. Moving on to the third. Madam President and members of the City Council, presenting a series of reports for your Committee on Zoning, Landmarks and Building Standards, which held a meeting on December 1st, 2020. The committee considered two items which received do not pass recommendation recommendations. The first was document number 02019-3815, the historical landmark designation for the Pilsen Historic District primarily West 18th Street from South Levitt Street to South Sangamon Street and residential blocks bounded by the eight, by 18th Street, South Ashland Avenue, West 21st Street and South Racine Avenue. This ordinance received a do not pass recommendation from the committee by roll call vote of zero yeas and 18 nays. The second item was document number 02020 dash 4530, a call for a temporary moratorium on the issuance of complete demolition permits for applications filed on or after November 1st, 2020 within the Pilsen Historic District. This ordinance received a do not pass recommendation from the committee by roll call vote of seven yeas and 11 nays. Madam President, that concludes my report. Reports, I should say. Uh, thank you, Chairman Tunney. Um, next is the Joint Committee on Housing and Real Estate and Zoning Landmark and Building Standards. Madam President and members of the City Council, reporting, uh, re presenting a report for your Joint Committees on Housing and Real Estate and Zoning Landmarks and Building Standards, which held a meeting on December 15, 2020. The following item was passed 
by a majority of the members present. Page one contains a text amendment of municipal codes titles two, four, and 17 by modifying various provisions governing affordable dwelling units. Uh, before I ask for a motion, I know my uh, Chairman Osterman would like to speak on this item. The chair recognizes Chairman Osterman. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just want to uh, commend Chairman Tunney for his leadership in helping us um, steward this ordinance through uh, to the members of the Zoning and the Housing Committee, which had a, held a subject matter hearing earlier in the summer uh, and had a meeting uh, earlier this week. This ordinance creates a pilot project that will create uh, the ability for homeowners and property owners to establish accessory dwelling units that will add units of housing around the city of Chicago in these pilot areas. Um, this is a collaborative effort with the city council and the housing department, the zoning department, and buildings. I want to commend uh, Commissioner Navarra, uh, Patrick Murphy, um, and Matt Baudet for their leadership in their departments and your administration, Mayor Lightfoot. Um, this is a, an ordinance that we think is going to create units that by nature will be affordable and accessible around the city. Uh, we will keep the council informed as to the progress of this as we add these units and um, have a, the Department of Housing is going to have an education campaign on this matter as well as uh, a grant program for low to moderate income uh, Chicagoans to add these units to their property. So uh, I seek uh, the support of the members of the council today and look forward to this um, helping people around the city. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Osterman. Chairman Tunney, is there a motion pending? Yeah. Uh, Madam President, I move passage of this item by the last most favorable roll call vote of the Finance Committee report and the associated unsuccessful motion to reconsider, noting that Alderman Ray Lopez and Alderman Patrick Thompson would like to be recorded as vo voting no on this matter. Uh, with those uh, no votes uh, recorded, uh, hearing no further objections, so ordered. Madam President, uh, that concludes my report. Thank you, Chairman Tunney. Uh, Chairman Austin, back to you. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you for allowing me to report at the end. Screen went just totally black. Uh, for reporting for your committee on contract oversight and uh, equities, a meeting that was held on December the 2nd, 2020 an ordinance solely extending articles six of chapter 2-92 of the municipal code. Uh, ordinance number 0202-5161. I move that the city council concur in the recommendation of the committee by the same roll call as item number one of the committee on finance report and the same unsuccessful motion to reconsider. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Thank you, Madam President. That concludes my one letter report. More to, more to come, Chairman Austin, more to come. I yes, promise. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next uh, on the agenda is a greed calendar. Um, Alderman Harris. Thank you, Madam President. I received from the clerk, uh, Andrea M. Valencia, a total of 99 items proposed for the agreed calendar consisting of congratulatory, commemorative, tributary resolutions uh, from, the fall to, from the following aldermen. Um, uh, Mayor Lori E. Lightfoot, Alderman um, Hopkins, Alderman Sawyer, Alderman Thompson, Alderman Quinn, Alderman Burke, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Coleman, Alderman Brookins, Alderman Rodriguez, Alderman Austin, Alderman Viegas, Alderman Mitz, um, Alderman Smith, and Alderman Osterman. Um, so I move that we, the passage of the agreed calendar and the omnibus. I uh, hearing no objections, so ordered. Next, new business. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Uh, call the, sorry, please call the awards beginning with the 50th. Claims, fee permits, license fee exemptions, which are referred to the Committee on Finance. Zoning amendments, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Traffic regulations, traffic control signals, and traffic signs, which are referred to the Committee on Pedestrian and Traffic Safety. Grants of privilege on and over the public way, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Exemptions from physical barrier requirement for commercial driveway alley access to parking facilities, which are referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. 
Alman Martin has to propose order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 3407 North Polina Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Tunney has a proposed order for the issuance of permits for signed signboards at 2902 North Clark Street, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Smith has a proposed order for historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 560 West Fullerton Parkway, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Smith, Cardenas, and Waggis Pack have a proposed resolution to call for hearings on commercial and high density residential recycling program, which is referred to a joint committee of the Committee on Environmental Protection and Energy and the Committee on Ethics and Governmental Oversight. Alman Riley has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 3-4-151 to require the Department of Finance to publish monthly report of revenue collected from taxes imposed, which is referred to the Committee on Finance. Alman Riley also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to disallow additional package goods licenses on portions of North LaSalle Drive, West Grand Avenue, and West Illinois Street, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Riley also has a proposed ordinance for amendment of taxi gap stand number 479 on East South Water Street, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Vasquez has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to allow additional package goods licenses on portions of North Damon Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Nugent has a proposed order for a historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 5801 North Pulaski Road, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alman Mitz has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to allow additional package goods licenses on portions of West Lake Street, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alman Villegas has a proposed resolution to call for support of Frontline Healthcare Workers Student Loan Assistance Act of 2020 and call on the United States Secretary of Education and the United States Secretary of Treasury to authorize federal and private student loan forgiveness for essential workers, which is referred to the Committee on Education and Child Development. Alderman Ramirez Rosa has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-022 to allow additional alcoholic liquor licenses on portions of North Milwaukee Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Alderman Irvin has proposed orders for the issues of permits for signed signboards at 1520 West Harrison Street, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Alderman Burnett has a proposed ordinance for a vacation of the public alley in the area bounded by North Ogden Avenue, West Lake Street, North Loomis Street and West Randolph Street, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Cito Lopez has a proposed ordinance for conveyance of subsurface freight tunnels to and execution of easement agreement with 600 South Wells LLC for multi phase mixed use residential development located at 223 through 313 West Harrison Street, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Almond Cito Lopez and others have a proposed resolution to call for establishment of indoor sites for COVID testing, flu shots, and COVID vaccinations at Chicago Park District field houses, school gymnasiums, and Chicago Department of Public Health and Department of Family and Sports Service facilities. Budget, is, next Posado. Which is referred to the Committee on Health and Human Relations. Two committees called, the matters referred to the Committee on the Budget. Um, Mr. Clerk, when two I mean, committees are called, I believe referred, it must be go to rules. Apologies. Alman Rodriguez has a proposed ordinance for an honorary street designation as Honorary Magic Juan Suarez Way, which is referred to the Committee on Transportation and Public Way. Alman Rodriguez and Alman Hayden have a proposed resolution to call for incoming Biden administration to immediately enact immigration reform, which is referred to the Committee on Immigrant and Refugee Rights. Alman Brookins has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to allow additional package goods licenses on portion of West 87th Street, which is referred to the Committee on License and Consumer Protection. Almond Lopez has a proposed resolution to call for establishment of city, county, and state government regional reassistance commission, Renaissance Commission, to publicly discuss collaborative COVID-19 mitigation efforts, regional recovery, reopening spectrums, post-pandemic economic growth, and development, and travel and tourism revitalization which is referred to the Committee on Economic, Capital, and Technology Development. Alman Burke has proposed orders for the issuance of permits for signed signboards, which are referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. 
Alderman Cardenas has the proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 4-60-023 to disallow additional package goods licenses on portion of South Archer Avenue, which is referred to command license and consumer protection. Alderman Sedlowski Gaza has a proposed ordinance for dedication, opening, and vacation of public ways in the area bounded by East 116th Street, South Avenue O, East 122nd Street, and the South Chicago and Southern Railroad property, which is referred to committee on transportation and public way. Almond Beal has a proposed order for historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 113.45 South Forestville Avenue, which is referred to committee on zoning, landmarks, and building standards. Almond Mitchell, Telefiero, and Alderman Harris have a proposed resolution to call for hearings on the rising number of carjackings in Chicago and the necessary preventative procedures required, which is referred to the committee on public safety. Almond King has a proposed ordinance for amendment of municipal code section 17-2-0207 regarding special use approval, prohibited use and parking standards for cultural exhibits and libraries within various residential zoning districts, which is referred to the committee on zoning, landmarks and building standards. Almond King has a proposed ordinance for approval of a plan of Carlos S. Dotson resubdivision, which is referred to the committee on transportation and public way. Almond Hopkins has a proposed order for the historical, fee, historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 2146 West Pierce Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Transport for Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. And Alderman Laspata has a proposed order for historical, historical landmark fee waiver for the property at 1441 North Milwaukee Avenue, which is referred to the Committee on Zoning, Landmarks, and Building Standards. Your Honor, that concludes the automatic introductions. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Next up on the agenda, Alderman Mitchell for approval of the journal. Uh, Madam President, I'm not aware of any corrections to the journal move that it be approved by the same roll call vote that was applied to determine quorum. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Next up, unfinished business, Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I'm not aware of any unfinished business. Next is miscellaneous uh, business, Alderman Mitchell. I'm not aware of any miscellaneous business. And the date and time of the next city council meeting. Uh, I provided an ordinance to the clerk setting the date and time of the next meeting of the City Council for Wednesday, January 27, 2021, at 10 a.m. Madam Clerk, uh, please read the uh, ordinance. Be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Chicago, Section 1, because an in person meeting is not practical or prudent due to COVID 19, the next regular meeting of the City Council in accordance with applicable law shall be conducted by video conference on Wednesday, January 27. 2021 beginning at 10 a.m. and shall provide for remote participation and remote viewing by members of the public. If prior to then the Commissioner of Health issues a written termination that the City Council can safely proceed with an in-person meeting, the meeting will be held at a location to be determined that can safely accommodate the City Council meeting. Any such written determination will be posted on the City Clerk's website along with an amended meeting agenda, which will include a fixed location by 10 a.m. on Monday, January 25th, 2021. Section two, this ordinance shall take effect and be enforced from and after its passage. Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I move that matters. I move passage in the omnibus. Hearing no objection, so ordered. Um, now, next on the agenda is the omnibus and the chair recognizes Alderman Mitchell. Madam President, I move that matters in the omnibus be passed by the same roll call vote as was used to determine quorum. Hearing no objection, uh, so ordered. Next, uh, a motion for adjournment. Alderman Mitchell. Um, there being no further before the body, business before the body, I move that we adjourn by the same roll call vote that was applied to determine quorum. Hearing no objection, so ordered. The motion is carried. City Council's adjourned. Happy holidays to everyone.